Shalom, family. Um, I want to talk to y'all today about something I've been watching. Um, been looking at this PBS special about the Black Panther Party of Self Defense. Um, I want you to hear a comment that um, a former uh, 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 policeman had to say about what was going on at this time. Um, as y'all know, the Black Panther Party did great things for us, you know what I mean? Um, hands down. And they did it the legal way, the way they were supposed to, through courts. Uh, um, everything they're supposed to do, basically. They did everything the right way, but yet still, what happened? Look at their downfall. So that should be an example for us. They are the vanguards. Showing us the way. But, um, yeah, like I said, though, you, know, you can't beat them with their own court. You see what I'm saying? They developed this court system. The whole system of it. So how are we going to beat them with their own device? But anyway, just listen to what <laughs> this guy got to say. Just peep this out. Building and blow the deal after we left. It seemed like it was more. It was more of police presence around. We were getting stopped more. We were getting harassed more. I think they found out that. It was a different climate for them here. We'd stop them, we'd search them, we'd shake them down, and I think we did establish that we were the dominating force. They were the dominating force. The special weapons and tactics concept was formed in 1966. The original SWAT team in the United States, or anywhere for that matter, was the LAPD SWAT team. And in uh, this particular case, this was the first time the SWAT team was activated to serve a high-risk warrant. It was decided that a no-knock warrant would be utilized and surprise would be the element that you would use. A very close friend was working intelligence. And he told me, he said, Pat, these guys think they're going up against some street hoodlums. He said, they're not. They're fighters and they're shooters. Don't be at the door. I am on watch on the roof. It's a real quiet night. Everything is just still. You don't hear anything. The access to that roof on the other side, <clears throat> it breaks open. By the time I'm swinging around, I'm seeing a light on me. They had a big light. And I'm hearing the whole freeze, freeze, still trap. And the front door blew up. <laughs> Well, Pat went in a gun room. He had a Thompson submachine gun. Put it down with that Thompson. And it sprayed across the, across the roof. You could see the light from the street. And I was seeing it was like, at the time, man, I'm going to tell you, that instance, it was the best music I ever heard. And then all of a sudden, my gun just went off. I don't know what happened. The gun just went off. So, you know, so we had them in plank in the front. And then Paul Red got, got down, he got busy, and we drove him out the front door. Three officers were down, um, and the uh, gunfight continued as the officers were drug out of the way by other officers. Peaches and Tommy, the two sisters that were there, they went into the communication room. Just, you know, stop calling the news media and calling my national headquarters and calling everybody they can call. So putting them in the spotlight, showing how they tried to get away with this illegal act. <laughs> I looked at the TV channel.